In this video, we're going to look at naming um, ionic compounds. So this is the second part of the nomenclature series where we are going to take what we learned about ions and now we're going to um, combine that with, combine the two together, combine the anion and the cation together to name the compound. So in binary compounds, uh, in binary ionic compounds, what you're basically going to do is you're going to basically take the anion, the cation plus the anion name. And so uh, for binary compounds, the naming system, so for the cation, this is simply just the element name Um, remember, so uh, for example, potassium is just potassium ion, so we're just going to take the element name potassium, and then we're going to add to that the anion, which is going to be the uh, negative stem, the negative ion stem, plus the IDE prefix. So examples of this would be things like potassium chloride, KCl. So we name the first part, we name the cation potassium, and then we name the anion chloride and we put it together to get potassium chloride. And we could do this for CABr2. So in this case, this would be the cation would be calcium and the anion would be bromide. So uh, calcium bromide. Another example, a little bit more challenging one, so MgN3, uh, so we have magnesium And then in this case, this would be nitrogen. So the stem is nitra, is, is N-I-T-R, and then we add I-D-E to it. So we get magnesium nitride. And we can even do this for, one, for ions that have variable charge. So let's say that we have FeCl3. So now this is an interesting one because first things first, we have to figure out what the name of the positive ion is. And to do that, we have to figure out what its charge is. So if we have three Cl minuses, uh, which we know because all the, hal uh, the halogens are minus one, that's gonna mean that we must have a plus three charge for our iron. So this one is gonna be called iron three, that's our cation name, chloride. So now let's look at the acids. The reason why I say an aqueous solution is because you're gonna name things differently. So there's gonna be a different name for HCl gas versus HCl aqueous. So you do have to know the phase label. So AQ denotes the aqueous phase, meaning it's dissolved in water. So whenever, some, whenever an acid's in water, we're gonna use this system of naming. If it's HCl gas, then we're gonna name that hydrogen chloride. It's a, then it gets the molecular form. But in water, it takes on the ionic form. So the way that we name the ionic form, so I'm just gonna cross that out because uh, we're not naming the gas right now. So this is HCl aqueous. The way that we name this is we name this hydro, um, then we put in the stem, and then we put in the ic acid. So it's hydro stem of the negative ion ic acid. So HCl, for example, would be hydrochloric acid. Um, HBr would be hydrobromic acid. Okay, so now let's take a look at compounds with polyatomic ions. So the first case would be that you have a, um, a metal ion with a polyatomic ion. So again, what you do is you name the metal, and then you add to it the polyatomic ion name. So let's look at some examples. So uh, an example would be Na2SO3. So sodium, that's easy. We name the metal sodium. And then we have to memorize what SO3 is. That's sulfite. So this would be sodium sulfite. Now, if that were, for example, let's say that this was iron sulfite, just as an example, 
Uh, remember the iron the sulfite has a minus two charge, so this iron is going to have a plus two charge. We would write iron two sulfite. And we can do another example where we have, uh, for example, sodium sulfate. This would be, in this case, again, sodium. And then instead of sulfite, we would have sulfate because it has the four O's. Okay, so now let's look at polyatomic ions when we have an acid. So we have hydrogen plus the polyatomic anion. So there's a couple of general rules. So um, it, I-T-E, that's the prefix. So for example, um, we have H2, we would have, this would be H2SO3. So this would be sulfite. Well, it goes to us and H2SO4, eight goes to ick. So what this would be called, so this would be us acid and this would be ick acid. So for example, this would be sulfur us acid and this would be sulfur ick acid for H2SO3 and H2SO4. And we can look at the case of um, the chlorates, which has the four, the example of the, the four. So we have HClO, HClO2, HClO3, and HClO4. So in this case, we have, this is the hypochlorite ion. This is the chlorite ion. This is the chlorate ion, and this is the per chlorate ion. So in, in the case where we have four, we can do the it and the us pretty easily. So this would be chlor us acid. This would be chloric acid. And then for the hypo, we do hypo chlor us acid and we do per chloric acid. So that's how you handle the polyatomic uh, anions with acid. There's one more piece to this and we have to look at what happens when we have compounds called hydrates. So hydrates are ionic compounds that include water in the structure. So now we know how to name the ionic compounds, but there's this, these other things called hydrates. And hydrates are basically, they're an, they're an ionic compound, so they have their crystal lattice. And built into this crystal lattice is water molecules. And like with the other, with the ion Lego blocks, the water molecules also also follow the same sequence. So for example, you would have plus, minus, and then there might be a water in between. Plus, minus, and then a water in between. So depending on the stoichiometry, this is a repeating sequence of water molecules that exist inside the crystal lattice. So that's what a um, hydrate is. And oftentimes hydrates can be heated up and dehydrated. Um, so that's something that the textbook covers but we're just gonna learn how to name hydrates. So for an example of this would be copper sulfate, and then we denote the hydrate with this dot. So the, the dot denotes the hydrates. So how do we name this? Well, we name, so the first thing you do is you name the ionic compound. And in this case, that's gonna be uh, copper. That's the name of the metal. And then because copper is a transition metal, we have to identify what its charge is. So we know that the sulfate anion has a minus two charge. Copper therefore must have a positive two charge since it's a one to one ratio. So we put copper two sulfate. And now we have to do the hydrate. So with the hydrates, you put a blank and then hydrate. And in the blank, you have to denote the number of the hydrate. So in this case, it's five. So we denote that with a penta, 
pentahydrate. So one would be mono, two would be di, three is tri, four is tetra, five is penta, six is hexa, seven is hepta, eight is octa, nine is nana, and 10 is deca. So from that, you can name, and this is what's gonna go into the number for the hydrate, depending on the number of water molecules you have, in this case it's five, you put in the pentahydrate. So this would be copper two sulfate pentahydrate. And you can um, go back from this, so if you, had to, if you had to write this out, you would write out the ionic compound from the, the name, and then from the pentahydrate, um, you could extract back the number of hydrogens that go after the, 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 the number of water molecules that go after the dot. So that is naming ionic compounds. Um, the next thing we're gonna look at in this sequence is molecular compounds, which is sort of a different naming structure. And then we're gonna have a short video that does some examples.